I'm Klaus Bischoff, uh, coming from Porsche in Stuttgart, working 43 years now for Porsche. Starts in 1968 in the race department as a little mechanic. And now I'm running the rolling museum at Porsche. We built just two years ago a new museum and I use it, you see it here, as my garage and take the cars out every year, uh, cars also to Australia. Yeah, we have a parade and we use every car, Moby Dick 962, 9082, RS60 of course, and uh, the Carrera GT. And uh, so uh, we want to show our Porsche fans and enthusiasts uh, that the cars are still running and that uh, the garage at the museum is open here for Australia. The RS60 shows really the style of Porsche. You see the bodywork, it was designed by Putzi Ferdinand Alexander Porsche. And uh, in this time, the car has also to look like a Porsche. This car was uh, very successful. It won in uh, 1960, first world championship race in America, in Sebring. That was a big, big, big victory. And next month, Hans Hermann with uh, Giovanni one Targa Florio, also with this car which we have here. And every important race driver in this time are driving this car. It was Sterling Moss, it was Phil Hill, it was Graham Hill, it was Bonnier, it was Hellman, and all those heroes driving this car at Nürburgring and Targa Florio and uh, made this car also special. It's especially, you know, that the race car can also looking nice, girl, and, and this one, uh, is, is really nice. It shows exactly the Porsche curve, what we call it. Yeah, and if you put it together with all the Porsches until to the Panamera, that every child see, okay, that's a Porsche on the line. And you can see it from the very first Porsche from 48, from the 356 Roadster until now, that Porsche line is really a special thing. No, no other company do it like this. This was the beginning of an era of mid-engine cars again after the RS60s. Point two mind is the second version. We won every race against the Ferraris and the Ford GT GT40s and the Lola T70s. And so Porsche was first time in 69 world champion of the makes. And this car especially is a real winning car of Targa Florio in 69 with Gerhard Mitter and Udo Schütz. And so we are proud to have it here. And it, at first it was a real car which was running very well and over this distance. It was 1,000 kilometers and it was very easy to drive. I say always like a little go-kart, but the handling was very well. And of course we had uh, very good drivers and, and at Targa Florio this lightweight car was, was very easy to drive. And in this time like Nürburgring, like Targa Florio, and in Spa, it was normal road racing nearly. It's like being back 40 years, yeah, not, and 42 years, and uh, it's just fun. It's still exciting yeah, with this many cars on the track and overtaking. We want to use it at, at the Targa Tasmania as a, a rally car. Yeah. We just want to see this car running in, in Tassie. Moby Dick, it's normally the type is 935. We raced first time with this car in, in Le Mans and it was a, a, a big era of uh, racing on a base of a 911 turbo and the last of the line was a Moby Dick yeah, in 78. Yeah, was first 911 with water cooled cylinder head so it starts water cooling really at Porsche in 78 on a 911. It was more called Moby Dick first, first uh, race we did in Vallelunga. It was just white colored and this big white whale girl that gave him the name. It's really made for Le Mans, you know. In Le Mans we had this long straight about six kilometers. It made for aerod aerodynamic, for a high speed thing. And so this shape is made really for going fast, 350, 360 kilometers per hour in the straight. Moby Dick had only three races, Vallelunga, Silverstone and Le Mans. It was just to show uh, the technique of turbocharging need a lot of fuel in this time. We, mechanics in, I was a mechanic with this car. Every 30, 35 minutes we have to refuel. So uh, for preparing and, and everything, we can't sit down in Le Mans uh, during 24 hours. But it's a, a fantastic car and, and shows uh, what you can do with a 911. Uh -huh. I changed from mechanic to engineer in uh, 1980. 
and we start to develop this, this car in 81. And uh, maybe it's the uh, most winning and, and important car in Porsche history after the 917. This type won seven times Le Mans. And this one is the 87 Le Mans winner. First was 82, and it dominating all the races, race tracks around the world. Yeah, and this car is a real special one. And I was an engineer and had the best time in 83, 84 with Stefan Belov and Derek Bell. Yeah, and we won the world championship uh, last race, 84, in Sandown in Melbourne. And that was one of my 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 best day in my life when we won in '84 and sent down Australia. And if you ask any race driver who did it in this time and may, maybe the most did it, they say my favorite car is still the 962, best car Porsche ever built. <laughs> At first, it was a really new step in uh, in making cars in Porsche. With this uh, special aerodynamic, with this ground effect, which means uh, under, underneath uh, there are channels and and uh, a special technique, and also on on top of the car, and this aerodynamic was uh, another world than before. Yeah. And it's so nice to drive. This car is very very helpful for the driver. You know, in this time, uh, 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 Wolleg and Maas and X and Belov, they, they had only two drivers in Le Mans. Now they have four, and it's only only possible if you have a very good, comfortable car. We drove this, those cars through the town of Melbourne, over the highway to the racetrack, and that's also a, a part of Porsche history. And, it looks really uh, dramatic race cars on the highway again. Many, many people here talking about this weekend when they saw, saw the car on the highway again. Uh, this 962, so that was special. This car to drive, it's always uh, make you happy. <laughs> we started in 2000, we made a race car for Le Mans. But with the regulation, we stopped it, and so uh, Dr. Wiedig said, OK, let, let us make a street version from this Le Mans car, said it's not done for nothing. It was a time of the supercars. This car is uh, maybe one of also the best looking and best noisy cars. It's, it's a lovely noise. It's not so low, but it's, it's really, really nice. And uh, to drive, it's, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, one time in your life, you must drive a Carrera GT. <laughs> Now it's also historic, nearly 10 years old yeah, and still looking actual. Yeah, and then it was also like a race car on the street with a carbon fiber chassis and with this V10 engine. And, uh, and we made more than 1,000 and we earned money with this car. That is not normal with supercars. Around the world, yeah, there are very uh, uh, good owners. Yeah. Jerry Seinfeld owns the first one yeah, in America. And, uh, I saw it in the garage in New York and I asked him what you are doing in New York with the Carrera GT and he said driving yeah, out to Connecticut in the forest yeah, and then he had fun. Yeah. So what I want to say is that you can it use every day yeah, and that was the special of this Carrera GT. It's a Porsche line. Yeah. This Carrera GT which is a completely different car but it looks like a Porsche anyway. Uh, yeah, the cars have to do what they are made for, they have to run and we run them and so in the museum you can smell it, sometimes you can hear it and it's special for Porsche.